Well, hello. So today's lecture is going to be on time. <clears throat> so um, we're looking at the same data set that we've been looking at in the previous two lectures. Uh, and we've got a company, fictional company, who wants to know about the products that don't sell well or aren't very profitable, don't uh, cost too much to market, those kind of things. Last time, last week, we took the products uh, where we got sales for the whole year and we just looked at um, uh, the total sales for each product and, and categorize them into high and medium volumes. Um, what we're going to do today, though, is look more closely into the data and see uh, look at the trends over time uh, using two more visualization techniques. One is line plots. Uh, so we're mapping the data over time. So on the bottom axis, you get the time. Uh, on the uh, um, left-hand axis, you get the, uh, the units sold. And area plots, stacked area plots. We'll use them a little bit at the end. They're quite useful, but uh, we'll mostly focus on line plots. Okay, common features uh, in all of the examples are, as before, we import the libraries matplotlib and pandas. We read in the data, uh, and then we um, convert the data to date time, um, and then we show the plot. Okay, so then these are these are all common, just exactly the same as the code we used before, so no changes there. Um, but then you may or may not have noticed the two extra lines um, that are doing the conversion to time. This this first line isn't strictly necessary. You know, the PD dot plotting register map plot lib converters isn't strictly necessary. Uh, I just get sometimes get um, error messages if I don't use that, or warning messages rather. Data.index, though, is very, very crucial. And if you don't do that, you'll, you can't handle the index because uh, it, it treats the index, which is a series of dates, if you remember. So that if you remember the, the CSV file, the index is a series of dates. It treats them as just strings of text. And so when it tries to plot those on the um, on the x-axis, ju you just get a, um, a black sort of black box where it's just printing all the overprinting all the text strings. If we convert them to dates, it can then handle them properly and, and treat them as, well, this is a year, it knows it's a year, it knows when the months are and when the, the days are even, so we can uh, we can get much better um, uh, tick marks on the x-axis. Um, so, as I said, strictly speaking, only the last line is less necessary and the other one just prevents a warning message. Also, notice uh, I'm not using NumPy in, in most of these examples. I don't think any of them today um, because we don't need it. The data, um, as we saw last week and the week before, the data has uh, 25 columns, one for each product type, and 365 rows, one for each day of the year. And it's the, the rows that are going to be crucial this time. And we can we can see that by getting a, a summary of the data from data.head. And this kind of data is known as time series data, um, which is just defined as a, a set of regularly timed measurements. So here, there is one measurement every day, which is the sales for that product every day. But these are very common in sales data, financial data, so share prices, where the, the measurement might be every uh, every minute, every second. Um, environmental data, temperatures, they're measured regularly. Resource management, number of patients, that kind of thing. They're, it's a very common type of data to do a regular measurement of something at some point. So we're going to explore the daily sales then over the year rather than just the total sales we'll look at the what happens daily uh, and to get a sense of what happens over time so i'm going to finish this video here and then we'll move on to look at um, some initial examples <laughs> 